It had been one of those very ordinary days in Rhubarb's garden. One of those days when the sun doesn't even bother to get out of bed. So neither had Rhubarb. It had been one of those days. Finally, the old street light outside Rhubarb's house twinkled on and Rhubarb's alarm clock rattled its bones. Time to get up. Time to journey into the space. Oh, I do love the nightlife, he said to himself in a talking to himself kind of way. Good evening. Here's the new. Wireless crackled as Rhubarb tucked into his favorite breakfast, baked bones on toast. Ah, just as everyone else is thinking about dinner, I'm starting my new day. All night, as the case may be for most, he munched and devoured the newspaper story about the thing that spoke. A film now showing at the local cinema. Well, we'll be off to see the film then, warbled Moggy Malone, as she and Poodle Princess tiptoed like ghosts through the kitchen and waved their cinema tickets. The thing that spoke. They were spoke and were gone. Have they gone? He inquired Custard. Disappeared into the night, crunched Rhubarb, and went on to say that Mouse was down in the shed and that if he hadn't already eaten our midnight feast, he should have the computer running, so as to say, and the satellite equipment ready to probe the space to search the stars. Sure enough, Mouse was on the mouse wheel and the computer was about to fire up so that they could monitor any information that they might find in the space. Rhubarb wound the sky scanner wheel this way and that, trying to pinpoint the whereabouts on whatever it was that they were looking for. That is what happened. Whatever it was began to pulse into the shed's nerve center. Could it be that this was the night? The one night since the beginning of time when the three chums would discover secrets of the space all from Rhubarb's shed? Opening star bay two, Rhubarb announced. And with that, he pushed the cellular sensitive receptive antenna out through the squeaky trapdoor in the shed roof. In the meantime, the sky scanner's dish slowly turned this way and that, roaming the star-clustered heavens. Slowly but surely, Rhubarb's sophisticated equipment investigated patterns of stars, the plough, the pole star, and then turned majestically towards Mars itself and probed deep into the space. And all the time, Custard kept asking about the bear. Oh, for goodness sake, Custard, whispered Mouse. If you're really desperate for the bear, then eat it, chocolate and all, but do it quietly, please. Oh, and while you're at it, you may as well polish off the last of the fairy buns. No, I just want the chocolate bear, said Custard. Eyes met. Nothing was said. Rhubarb didn't blink. Custard stopped eating. Mouse didn't move. What could it be? Whispered Rhubarb into Mouse's ear. Just as Poodle Princess and Moggy Malone tumbled into the shed, both as white as ghosts. Ha, 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 ha. It's out there, puffed Moggy. I've never in all my life ever seen or heard such a strange thing as is out there, she wheezed. And Poodle Princess nodded dramatically and didn't, or couldn't, utter a single sound. As sure as I'm standing here, I tell you, that whatever it is, the creature has millions of teeth, she gasped while all the time the thumping thumps came closer. Mouse, efficient as ever, switched the listening devices to automatic and Rhubarb turned the shed light off. Hiding in the corner of the shed, the plucky little group huddled together, except for Rhubarb, who plucked up enough courage to peep through the window. Look at the house, Rhubarb whispered with a thin, awestruck breath. Look at the strange shadow. Is it... The thing that spoke? It can't be the thing that spoke. It hasn't said anything yet, whispered Moggy. Oh, Rhubarb, darling, I may be out for some time, said Poodle Princess, and fainted. The others stared at the shadow. Oh, it's millions of teeth, whispered Moggy. It's moving, squeaked Mouse, just as the shed door burst open. And everyone ran off into the night, 
even Poodle Princess, who was still asleep. The sky scanner was left to scan the sky, the computer was left humming to itself, and the last of the fairy buns were left in the dark. When Mrs. Hedgehog waddled into the shed, it looked, she thought, as though someone had left in a hurry. She wondered what on earth had happened. I thought I heard someone here. Someone must have scared them off, she muttered to herself, and shrugged her prickly shoulders and began to tuck into the delicious fairy buns. Mm, oh, <laughs> can't let these go stale, she munched. And suddenly, she was aware of a strange noise. It sounded very close indeed. Oh, I don't like the sound of that at all, said Mrs. Hedgehog, and rolled off into the night just as the computer started talking gibberish. Moments later, Rhubarb's garden lit up, brighter than an ordinary day, and with one last thurump, whatever it was, it was gone. And gone, too, was Mrs. Hedgehog's shadow from the house. Was there something out there that night? I'm sure I heard something, said Mo. Whiz! The home of ABCs, 1, 2, 3s, and all your favourite kids' TV characters. Now let's find kids' TV. Or I can press this microphone. Whiz. That's how easy it is. <laughs>